In this video, we're going to take a first look at Fluent Card. Now, this is currently in beta, so this is an early access for me to test things out. So there may be quirks, there may be features missing and so on that they're talking about going to be released. And I would recommend taking a look at the Fluent Card website, link in the description down below, so you can see what's going to be included when this is a fully featured product. So let's go and take a quick look at it. Now, this is not a review. This is just an overview of some of the features, what I've kind of found when I've been testing things out very, very briefly. And then and once this is actually a little further down the line or released, I will create a video on it where we can take a look at it in its final form. So let's just jump over now into WordPress and take a quick look. So this is the dashboard. The first thing I will say once I set this up and installed it is it feels incredibly snappy. It's not like, for example, some of the other big players out there. You probably know who I'm talking about they can feel quite slow and sluggish in the dashboard. Now, while this is a setup that WP Managed Ninja have actually supplied me, I've also installed this on my own setup using InstaWP, and it's exactly the same experience. It's very quick and smooth. And when you're working in something like this where you are probably going to be jumping around to various different parts of the interface quite frequently, you want something that's nice and snappy, not something that's going to be slow and painful to actually work with. So that's the first thing I've noticed, and it is something I can definitely appreciate. Okay, so let's take a quick look. This is your kind of homepage dashboard that gives you an overview of various different things, and you can expand your left-hand section out, and there's a few extra things inside here that are not at the top, things like logs, product categories, and so on. So with any kind of e-commerce software, it's going to come down to a couple of main features, products and orders. These are the two things you're going to probably handle on a very regular basis. So first of all, let's just jump into the product section and take a look at some of the products, some of the features that are here. You can do this from the left-hand menu or from the top. In this example, let's just collapse this menu to give us a bit more space. Okay, so let's go into our products. And as you can see, we've got a bunch of products inside you. You've got your filtering at the top, which is pretty self-explanatory. You've got physical and digital products. And that's one of the first things that I kind of appreciate about this is it does away with the need for anything to handle things like handling digital software, handling licensing and license management and those kinds of things, and also for subscription models. So that will all be included as part of Fluent Cart, which I think is pretty cool. So let's take a quick look at, for example, a typical product. Let's come down and find something like a sort of physical product, like a hoodie or something like that. And you can see it tells us it's a physical product. It's got simple variations, the price range, the quantity for stock management, and where it's published draft and so on. Let's jump in and take a look. And this is the interface. And as you can see, all this is in real time. I'm not speeding the video up or cutting it here. What you're seeing is when you click it, it's there. This kind of goes back to talking about how snappy this all feels. So this is a typical product, and much the same as you've seen in most other sort of e-commerce tools. You've got your title, your short description, your long description. You can jump into code if you want to with this. You can preview the template to see what it's going to look like. You've got your featured image. You've got any additional images that you want to include. All pretty standard kind of things. Then you've got your pricing and so on if you've got variations. And as you can see, we can have simple variations or a simple product. I believe they're going to expand this a little later with more options. At the moment, this is pretty good, but there's room for improvement over what we've got in some of the other more established products. So this is what we have right now. Like I say, that's what we can take a look at. And if you want to take a look at any of these, you can click to come in and you can edit options there. So you can change the title, whether it's a physical product, digital, and so on, payment options, manage profit and cost, which I think is quite a nifty little feature. You can actually put in how much the item costs you and it'll work out your profits and your margins. And then you can use that in your sort of data that you put together in your reports and so on. I think that's quite nifty. You know, nice to see that you can easily at a glance see what kind of profit margins you're making. And if a product goes up or goes down from the manufacturing point of view, you you can modify that and you can see the differences take effect immediately. So that's pretty cool. Update your price inside here, make any changes you want. Same with all of these. And you can easily drag and drop to move this around. So all pretty simple and self-explanatory, nice and clean and easy. You've then got your inventory management, which ties into what you've got here in your variations. So you can see we've got five variations and we have five different products inside our inventory management. So you can handle that inside here. If it's a downloadable product, you've got downloadable assets. We'll take a look at that where we take a look at some downloadable products. Then you've got options for your product organizer. You can group these together by various different things like your payment terms, repeat intervals, and so on. Again, depends on what type of product it is. 
Your product organizer, so you can choose what categories this is going to go into. So pretty simple, self-explanatory there. Again, it can be multiple categories. You can add a category directly inside your, your product types, for example. You can set that up, and again, you can add product types, and you can also configure your shipping classes and add those inside you as well. Once you're happy, simply hit the update, job done. Your more actions gives you the ability to preview this or delete it. And you'll also notice that we've got these extra options at the top. So currently we're looking at the edit product. We've also got upgrade path, integrations, and license settings. Now integrations currently isn't here, but my assumption will be that this will integrate into something like Fluent CRM. And if you are in the sort of Fluent ecosystem like I am, where I use things like Fluent CRM, the SMTP plugin and so on to handle a lot of different things, they include automation and so on. This is gonna be pretty sweet because it'll integrate into that whole ecosystem and then you can handle the whole email marketing and promotion and CRM side of things in a package that you're already used to and integrate it natively into Fluent Card. Again, this is one of those kind of strengths of using a tool like this where it's part of an ecosystem that it does give you the ability to connect these things up together. I like that. Upgrade paths. So this is basically if you want to have things like upsells and so on. So you can see we can add a path in and you can come in, you can choose your plans and so on, your pro rata, it, discount amounts and so on. I'll take a look at this in a little bit more detail when we actually have a final release where we can see how this will all work. License settings in this example, not really relevant because this is a, a physical product, not a digital product. So we'll leave that as it is. And then you can just update your settings if you make any changes. Job done. So that's sort of physical products. Let's go and take a look at a digital product. Let's have a look at this Site Builder Pro product. So this is a digital product. So a lot of the options are going to be similar inside here, but they're going to work in a slightly different fashion because you're dealing with software and digital products as opposed to physical products. So again, all the same options for the basics there. So you've got your pricing. As you can see, we've got different variations for single agency and lifetime. So again, you can configure those, set those up as you need to. We're not going to worry about inventory management because there's a software, so you can download as many times as you want. And then you've got your download. Well, assets. Click your three options, and you can copy the download link. You can edit this, or you can add digital assets directly inside you should you want to. Then you come over, and you've got your normal options for your images, your group by, the product categories and types, and so on. So all exactly the same. If we jump into upgrade paths, though, this is where things are slightly different. You can see now the single site license can be upgraded to the agency license or the lifetime license. So because we've got these product variations here, those can be used when it comes to the upgrade paths. So, for example, the agency license, that can go up to a lifetime license. It can't go down. So you can see this is kind of like the, not so much the upsells, but it kind of gives you the ability to allow people without having to contact you directly to take their product that they purchase and then upgrade it afterwards to a higher tier or something like that. Again, pretty nifty you can have that set up inside you. If you want to edit these, you can open up an edit and you can see the options are inside you. And the pro rate, in other words, pro rata will be based upon how long you've got left on your license and how much you would pay to go the next tier and so on again all pretty sweet and nifty integrations we've seen that doesn't count right now license settings though you can see if we come in here this will now give us information about how we set up the licensing side of things so if you're using something like easy digital downloads this may well be a replacement for that where it'll handle the download side of things the digital things the licensing systems this licensing keys and so on so again, pretty cool. So you can enable the licensing and inside you, you can set up various different options. And if we come out of this and go into licenses, for example, you can see this now shows us the different licenses that are currently active and available. So based upon people that have purchased them, there's the order ID, there's the customer, there's the number of activations, and you can simply come in and take a look at the options here. So if we jump in, you can see there's our license key. You can regenerate this if you want to. It tells you the product, the purchase date, the activation limit, and so on. Any URLs that are currently using that particular product and license, and the payment history for that particular customer. So all pretty nice and streamlined, directly integrated into your shopping cart solution. So if you want to use this just for digital products and have no interest in sort of physical products, and you want to have license management, it's all being done here for you. Now, this isn't a world that I'm particularly familiar with. I don't handle any kind of licensing with any digital products that I've got. So if you do do that, let me know in the comment section down below what you think of this and if there's anything you would like to see added to it, anything it's kind of not doing that you would need it to do in comparison to maybe the product or service you are currently using. I'd love to know. Okay, so we've seen that. Let's take a quick look now at orders. 
So as you can see, there's our orders. I've created an order for a bit of fun just to see how this would work. You can see it tells me it's pending, the states are on hold, and the order type is payment. So if we click to expand this, you can see it tells me what product or products that I've actually chosen. I can click and go and take a look at those. I can see the person that purchased it. I can expand that and find any information out about them. And we see the order details and so on. If we click to go into the order itself, you can see I've bought a digital product that currently pending, and you can see how my payment set up so we can say collect payments and from here we can send a custom payment link if you want to or we can mark it as paid again it depends on what you're using this is currently set up to take sort of offline payments to test things out but obviously PayPal Stripe and various other payment options are supported so let's say it's mark this as paid we'll say cash and delivery market as paid job done as you can see that's now completed and we can see underneath there's my license key and uh, tells me it's currently active. I've got some more actions inside here so I can cancel back to process and send a receipt out or I can refund it. You know, it's it's simple and self-explanatory. There's nothing complex or comprehensive here that you probably couldn't handle and probably already do handle this kind of thing. But again, to go back to what I said, it's just snappy and simple and easy to work with. Subscriptions, if you hand in a subscription model, you can see you've got all the options inside here. And again, if we open this up, We'll see now we have a lot of the same information, but because it's a subscription, there's going to be slightly different options inside you. You can see the receipt. This was paid for via PayPal, so you can click and go and take a look at the receipt. You can see the payment cycle, whether it's paid and so on. You can click and open that up, and then there's more information about the payment, including the activity associated with it. If you're using UTM parameters for a campaign to market and promote this, you can have that information here so you can see where they've come from, check your UTM parameters and see what's working effectively and what's not. So again, pretty cool. Again, we've got the option to refund some more actions inside here. So nothing we haven't already seen. Let's just jump into the reports now. So inside the reports, you can see things are broken down into various different subcategories. So we've got our gross value, we've got our gross revenue, our gross breakdown. So we can see all this information. We can see Within 21 days of Q2, your gross value of blah, blah, blah. The quarter seems to have decreased by 3.5%. So nice that we get some comparative so we can see exactly what's going on there. Your net revenue, your quarterly revenue, top countries, and so on. So there's, there's some useful information here. One thing I would love to see integrated into this, and maybe this is beyond what we can do inside this, but it would be nice to have something there, is to be able to connect this up to some kind of AI tools, and then we could use that to actually glean information from these statistics and give us information on how we can improve things, where we're sort of failing, those kinds of things, to kind of give us some more insight into how we can improve our online store. I'd love to see something like that integrated into this and kind of tie into the statistics and the reports to give us even more actionable information. Pretty cool, that would be. Now, if we jump into customers, for example, we can now break down the information about our customers. We can search and filter. So we can create advanced filters if you want to. We can customize these and create our own unique filters. That's pretty cool. We can come into any of these, open it up, and we'll see there's the orders this person has placed. There's the information about them. You can click on any of these. That'll take you over to the order. We'll see exactly what's been ordered and so on. So pretty nice. And again, you can see there's those UTM parameters, and we can see what parameters have been passed over that helped convert this into to a sale. Again, nice things, especially when you're heavily into marketing and promoting and using paid services, email marketing and things, you want to be able to track all that information and find out what's generating the sale. So that's pretty cool to see we've got that directly integrated inside you. Speaking of working with products and things like that, how about on the front end side of things? Now, currently when this is in beta, and I believe they'll probably launch like this as well, it's only integrated with Gutenberg, but Bricks and Elementor and some other integrations are due to come out. So we will be seeing those integrations included. Now, when you jump into Gutenberg, you've got some additional blocks that are Fluent Cart blocks. So you can see we've got this block here, and if we expand out from the left-hand side, we've got our Fluent Cart products, which if we select, we then have a bunch of configuration options down on the right-hand side. So you can set up your paginator, your product grid options. For example, you can set it to grid. I want to start it. You want to product per row, for example. So you can see we can easily customize this. You add filter options in. You've got global options that customize various different aspects, which is great. And if you are working directly inside Gutenberg, this will probably be more than enough to get you up and started. I don't really use it, so I'm not really playing around too much with it. But there are some additional sort of blocks inside just so we come over to our blocks, for example, and scroll through. You'll see we have some dedicated Fluent Card buttons, so like direct checkout, add to cart, product details. We've got our cart products, so you can see we've got 
similar kind of things to this, your search bar, your pricing table, and so on. And we can easily add those in. And uh, you can also set up conditions for where and when this shows. So if someone's logged in, they're not logged in, those kinds of things. So there's there's enough here to kind of get you started and be able to integrate this into your theme. For me, I'm holding off and hoping that Bricks will be out relatively soon so I can test that. Because for me personally, and I know a lot of people on this channel, that's going to be what you're most, most interested in. But they will be supporting those, just not straight away at the time of releasing. So before I close this down, let me just quickly go over some of the things that are included and some of the tentative release dates for the additional features. So if these are key and important to you, this is, gives you some indication of when these should be released. Don't take this as being 100% written in stone because as we know with any kind of software development, things get in the way, some things come out quicker, some things take a little longer. But as you can see, we've got all these options already covered, like the shipping, license generation, and so on, like we've seen in this video. Invoice generation and so on, these are due or ongoing, and they're due out this month or next month at the time of releasing this video. And then you've got things like one-click purchase and so on. These are planned for Q3 in 2025, so before the end of the year. Things like data export, settings, page redesign, and so on. Then your page builder integrations. So you can see Gutenberg is ongoing, but it's already in there as it were. Then we've got Bricks, Elementor, Divi and others. Bricks, Elementor and Divi, the th three key players I would say at this point in time are planned for next month. So hopefully that will be the case. Others then Q3 and Q4 of the year. Some additional planned features, up sales, down sales, built-in order flow automation, sales funnels, EU tax and general taxes, which obviously is going to be something that's important for most users. And then your advanced shipping. Again, these are planned for this year. And with anything like this, this is a massive undertaking. This isn't just a little plugin that handles SMTP, for example. This is something that's going to handle every aspect of your online sales process, your cart, your licensing, your products, your management, your sort of inventory, all those kinds of things. So we have to be understanding of the fact this isn't going to be released with everything you're going to need. It is going to be something that's going to take a little bit of time. But my experience of anything to do with WP Managed Ninja, like, for example, Fluent Community, which came out probably, I don't know, six to eight months ago, they start off with the fundamentals and they are very quick at rolling out new features and listening to the community and oftentimes releasing those key features quicker than they actually announce. So I'm excited to see where they go with this. So the final question is, would I or will I use Fluent Cart when it's released? Well, obviously, we're going to have to wait to see some of the key features and when they roll out, like I say, for the BRICS integration and so on, taxes and things like that. But I'm not a fan of WooCommerce because I think while the core plugin is free and great for smaller projects, once you start to scale that or you start to need things like digital download management, subscription models and things like that, it all gets very expensive very, very quickly. And... The resources can very quickly start to go up as you have a more comprehensive online store. So I'm hopeful that the resources required for Fluent Cart will be much more optimized because this is a new product where they've got the ability to look at existing products, where their sort of limitations and their failings are, and hopefully address those and make a product that's just far better. This is all self-contained, so you're not having to go to the cloud to handle anything like you do with Surecart and so on. You may think that's a good thing or a bad thing. I have no particular sort of opinion on it. It's just something that is worth noting. This is fully self-contained. There's no connection to the cloud or any external services. This is all handled on your own server. But what are your thoughts? Has this given you the incentive to take a look at Fluent Cart where maybe before you could have brushed it off? Are you a WooCommerce user or Surecart user and you think this would be a better option for you? Let me have your comments down below because I would love to hear your feedback and thoughts. As always, all applicable links are in the description down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.